So in the previous video, as I ran through the controls on the header and the menu, uh, you got to see one specific way of setting up your page header, uh, the combination of the identity plate, header area, and menu. Uh, I spent a lot of time, however, making sure that these controls are as flexible as possible to accommodate a wide array of different layouts. And so I'd like to uh, go freestyle a little bit now, uh, just to demonstrate some other possibilities for your header. Now remember I showed you that trick about speeding things up where you could reduce the number of images being loaded into your preview? Here's a great way of achieving the maximum possible speed when you're just working on your header, and that is to go down to Use Selected Photos and Deselect All Photos. We're not using them right now, so we don't need to see them. And now we're free to focus in on the header. So, freestyle time. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here is using a combination of the header settings, identity plate, and menu settings control groups to achieve different layouts for my page header. In fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to scroll down quickly to the gallery description section and turn that off as well. And uh, again, in an upcoming video, we'll go over all of that. So, dealing with the header. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and grab a different identity plate, or rather, I'm just going to create a very simple identity plate here in Lightroom. The turning gate. I'm going to render that in Adobe Garamond Pro because it just happens to be one of my favorite fonts at the moment. And I'm going to increase the size of that up to, oh, I don't know, let's try 64. So there, we've got a nice big logo to work with. Let's start moving things around. So, uh, the first thing I am going to do is drop that beneath the menu, which will shove the menu to the top of the page. Uh, I'm then going to work my menu a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that top border, and I'm going to give the menu items a bit more breathing room from the top. So I'm going to crank that up to 16. I'm going to <clears throat> reduce the size of the bottom border to a single pixel and then change that menu border to black. And I think it does need a little bit more breathing room on the bottom as well, so I'm going to increase that up to about 12? No, 10. 10 looks nice. I'm then going to scoot on up to the header settings, where I've got a couple of options. I can well, I go to the identity plate and I can add a border to the bottom of that uh, header. And then maybe I want to rein in the size of that a bit. So I'll go to my height and set that to maybe 98. Um, and I want to push the identity plate down a bit. I'm going to try increasing this to about 60 see if that gives me a space. Uh, that's almost there. Let's go to 65. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing position to see what I like for negative space. I'm going to take it to 70, and I think that's going to do it. Yeah, that looks nice to me. Um, so that's one way of doing things. I could also, <clears throat> if I wanted to, uh, push things all the way to the left, beginning with the identity plate and then going down to the menu, so set that left, and I'm going to set the total menu width to 100. Um, and if I wanted to rein that in a bit, I might set fixed header width to uh, 960 or 950. So that's a possible layout. Uh, I might also want to go ahead and get rid of this red, make it the same orange as down there, kill the bottom border, and then just have sort of a floating identity plate, which again, depending on the design of your identity plate and the look you're going for, can look really nice. Although, I'm not caring for it in this particular layout. Um, and again, if you want to work from the right hand side that's easy to do. Just take that exposition on the ID plate, crank that to 100, 
roll down through the menu settings and set menu alignment to right. And uh, well, Lightroom is adding some space on the right hand side of the identity plate, which is a problem. Uh, but what I might do in this case is take the, uh, or go back into Photoshop, make a new identity plate, and make sure that it cuts off right there at the, uh, at the right hand side of the graphic so that I don't have any dead space. Again, this is a reason I like to work with graphical identity plates rather than using Lightroom's built-in uh, support for creating those. So this, tr keep experimenting with more layouts. I'm going to set things back to center. I'm going to set my header height to zero just to get rid of that block completely. And as you can see, my identity plate disappeared along with it because it's now inside of a space that has zero height. Uh, but the way I'm going to get around that is by changing my ID plate location to menu and sticking the identity plate right into this green bar. I'm going to switch this back over to, we'll go to concrete, jump back to the same uh, identity plate we began with originally. And what I obviously need to do now is create space enough where we can see that identity plate. And so I'm going to use my menu padding top and menu padding bottom sliders to do that. So by adding padding to the top, you see what I'm able to do is keep my menu aligned to the bottom of this space with the identity plate over top of it. Say I wanted to do the opposite. Well, then I would take the padding top, I would keep that at a pretty low number, like 10, and then I would instead increase menu padding bottom which drops that logo vertically. And now I have the menu sitting over top of my identity plate. Now, if I wanted to make this entire thing more narrow, I can do that too. I'm going to force the identity plate to sit on the, to align itself rather to the very top of that box. And then I'm going to come back to padding bottom and I'm going to start pulling that up until it's sitting nicely on the baseline uh, or close to the baseline of that space. Then if I want to give some more breathing room to the top, I can do that. I can bring down the menu items a little bit and then I can return to the padding at the bottom and bring that back in. Again, just eyeballing things until I'm happy with what I see. So that's a nice way of working with the vertical space between your identity plate and your menu items. We can also work uh, with horizontal space. So this, say for example, I want to use this identity plate instead. I want to push that all the way to the left. I want to center align that again, so vertically I mean, so that it's in the middle of that bar. I can then also center align my menu by setting the menu padding top and bottom to equal values. So we're going to go to 24 and 24. So now my menu and identity plate are both vertically centered. I can fix with my header to sort of bring things in. And then I can use the padding left or right well, wait, I need to left align my menu first, sorry. Left align my menu. You can see now that it's overlapping my identity plate. And I'm going to use the menu padding left slider to push my menu to the outside of that identity plate. Not quite there, so I'm going to keep going. Unfortunately, you can't eyeball this one as it moves. You've just got to take a guess and sort of you know, knock around the number until you have it where you want it. So I want it closer than that. I'm going to take it down to about 300. 307 is close enough. And so then I can, again, adjust the, uh, the padding on the top and bottom to sort of line things up the way that I want. Just eyeball it until you like what you see. So now I have a nice left aligned where I've got uh, the ID plate and the menu. So as you can see, lots of possible options here.